brother. Jay, Disney parents, am I right? Always so dead. Everyone knows that Disney loves dead parents. It forces our main protagonist to guide their way through a series of difficult decisions, making the tough call when they don't have that guiding force behind them. Is the reason I wish they always had dead parents, but in reality, I think they just like to tear our hearts clean out of our chests. That was a really good way to start a video. But one character whose parents are completely missing and they didn't even take full advantage of making us cry our own tears is Kristoff. So today we figure out why little Kristoff is all alone. <laughs> I knew right from the very start that I liked Kristoff. He likes ice. Now that's ice. I might cry. I mean, look how clear that ice is, and they've got a whole entire cart of it. It literally took me years to figure out how to make clear ice, but to be fair, I was doing it artificially. He was going straight to the source. Listen, Kristoff, I could have gotten clear ice on my first day too if I was just within hiking distance of Nordic lakes. By the way, do not leave me comments saying, hey, did you try boiling the water in order to get clear ice? Of course I tried. It was the first thing I tried. But okay, okay, I'll tell you how I did it. I can tell you're dying to know. It was weirdly easy. All you had to do was freeze the water in an otherwise insulated container inside of the freezer itself, which causes the water to basically freeze more slowly and evenly. And then if you pull out that container before it freezes all the way, you're actually going to have a solid block of crystal clear ice, and below will actually be unfrozen water. Totally into like a and that's it! The point is, Ice is awesome. It has nothing at all to do with this parentlessness. It's actually kind of strange that this is a topic that doesn't come up more often. When we meet Kristoff right out of the gate, he's an orphan and we just sort of accept it at face value, even though he's like doing this super dangerous form of work in the way of ice harvesting. So my first guess is Kristoff is dressed the same as the rest of the men and he's just working alongside of them. So the immediate thought you jump to is that one of these men is just his dad and it was take your son to work day. But he isn't acknowledged by any of them. He has his own sleigh and he doesn't even know the words to that cool song they're singing. Bored of cold in winter air and mountain rain combining. I have to imagine that like on your first day of ice harvest camp, the first thing they teach you to do is the song. Like it's the easiest part. I mean, you heard it once and you know it. Come on, Kristoff. Hey, by the way, how much fun does ice harvest camp sound? Just shut up and take my money already. Sorry, sorry. I, I know we have a topic here. It's just whenever I get started on ice, I just, what were we talking about? back to Kristoff. So it does kind of seem like maybe Kristoff is just there with the men and the movie is just pointing specific focus to Kristoff and Sven since they're, you know, characters in the movie. But later Kristoff does clarify. When I was a kid, it was just me and Sven. So nope, at this point in his life, it's just him. He must've just worked out some kind of like subcontracting gig with the rest of those guys. But that rules out my first theory that one of the ice harvesters was just his father and that later when the trolls abduct him, they're abducting him. I'm gonna keep you. That's not how it works, rock lady. You just met him, you can't just adopt him. You don't know if he has parents. I mean, in fairness, he doesn't, but I still feel like you should have to like fill out some paperwork or do a background check or something. It is worth pointing out that despite how sweet and charming the trolls seem, in Norse mythology, there are actually stories and myths about something called changelings and fetches. Stop trying to make fetch happen. The concept is fairly simple. Basically, it's rumored that trolls would steal a human child. It actually even specifies that they're more drawn to blonde children and replace the child with a fairy-like child, or in the event that their magic wasn't quite strong enough that day, an enchanted log, which would promptly get sick and die. Honey, are we totally sure this is in fact little Timmy? The trolls would then keep the child and raise it as one of their own, even giving them gifts sometime in the form of supernatural abilities like strength, stamina, or an affinity for the wild. The affinity for the wild actually fits Kristoff's description like to the T. Literally the first line of his description from Disney is true outdoorsman, marking that yes for affinity for the wild. Of course, if this was the case, you would think that he would still remember his parents because he was eight years old when the trolls adopt him. And yet, maybe not. Actually, at the beginning of this movie, we literally see the trolls erase memories from Anna's mind. Honestly, that almost sounds like exactly what must have happened. Kristoff's parents are just off somewhere mindlessly raising a log for a son. He sure does just sit there a lot, doesn't he? No, just let him sleep. He's smiling, isn't he? And while I totally think that the writers of the movie were kind of taking it from this concept, I really do believe that these trolls in particular were just kind-hearted, sweet 
street rocks. And again, we know from Kristoff's quote later in the movie. When I was a kid, it was just me and Sven. Which again confirms that he was entirely alone at that time. But why is he alone? Did his parents abandon him? Are they dead? Did he run away from home? Was he abducted by the ice harvesters because of his natural ice pulling abilities? <laughs> That's probably not it. Well, another hint comes from co-director Jennifer Lee, who confirms that Kristoff is a Sami, the indigenous people of Scandinavia. There was actually a little bit of a controversy following the release of the movie because a lot of people thought that Disney whitewashed Kristoff and that a true Sami would have a darker skin and darker hair. But largely that controversy has died down because as it turns out, some of this native population actually have blonde hair and light skin. And here's where history rears its ugly head. The Sami people have inhabited this region of the world for 5,000 years and of course had their own culture, lifestyle, religion, everything. They even had their own industries including fishing and fur trapping and of course, wait for it, reindeer herding. Which in fact is what they're still best known for to this day. And then around 1720, their culture literally fell under attack. Like actually their culture, missionaries arrived and started burning down like their sacred drums and objects and locations. And also taking children from their homes at very young ages and teaching them a whole new culture. Even now, 300 years later, the Sami people and their culture are still suffering the consequences from these actions. And not only were the kids re-educated, but there were actually laws set into place that basically made it like illegal for the Sami people to practice their lifestyle. But bringing it back to Kristoff, the question here of course is, is it possible that he was one of these kids? He definitely doesn't seem very fond of people in general based on his criminally short song. Reindeers are better than people. Sven, don't you think that's true? Yeah, people will beat you and curse you and cheat you. Beat you, curse you, and cheat you. Like, it's, it's a little subtle, but... I'm getting the feeling he doesn't like people that much. And based on his interaction with Oaken, he's not very good with people either. Now part of this could be the fact that he was literally raised by trolls and his best friend is a reindeer, but I have a feeling being taken from your home at a very young age could also do the trick. It could even explain why he's with the rest of the ice harvesters at the beginning of the movie and none of them are his parents. It's like, they're not exactly going to teach him how to do it, but they're willing to let him watch and observe and learn. In fact, the very first time I ever saw the this movie, I thought it opened in a strange way. You start by listening to this music, the Frozen logo shows up on screen, and then it breaks into a different song. This song is actually music from the Sami culture, but what does it get replaced with? Born of cold and winter air and mountain rain combining. And admittedly, very catchy ice harvesting song that is totally demonstrating modern practices. And also, a little boy alone on a frozen lake. Now, I know what you're thinking, this doesn't exactly make the people of Arendelle sound all of that nice, and they seemed so friendly. Well, maybe, except for that epic screaming match over firewood. No, no, you've got the bark facing down. The bark needs to be faced up. Down is drier. Would not want to get involved with that one. Don't worry though, because I don't think that's exactly what happened. In an interview, director Jennifer Lee says that Kristoff was an orphan at the beginning of the movie and just couldn't stay put at the orphanage. Which doesn't explain what happened to his parents, but it certainly does make the town seem a little bit nicer, you know, like willing to take in this poor boy who's all alone. If I'm being honest, makes me feel a little bit better. I was about to give up Glog. Hot Glog in the Great Hall. Even so though, her story doesn't really line up that well with Kristoff's own words. When I was a kid, it was just me and Sven. Personally, I'm not convinced that Kristoff's parents are out of the picture or that this is the last time we'll hear about it. But guys, for my question of the day, what do you think? Was he kidnapped by trolls? Was he taken by missionaries? Are his parents alive? Be sure to leave your thoughts in the towel section down below. Also guys, just a reminder that we have the ultimate Super Carlin Brothers bracket challenge happening right now where we are taking all of our favorite movies and facing them off together, including everything from Disney, Pixar, Star Wars, Harry Potter, and Marvel. The link to the bracket is in the description down below. You have until tomorrow morning to fill it out before we start polling on Twitter. In order to help determine the winners, we'll be doing all of our polling on Twitter. You need to be following these four pages where each day we're going to be doing a different matchup. All you have to do is click to vote. And of course, whoever's bracket matches our master bracket the best wins a Nintendo Switch. But guys, that's all I've got for you today. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like some more Frozen action,
action from us, you can click this video right here to have ice harvesting explained, or this video right here to have the weird wood stacking argument explained. But Jay, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.